Hello. In this video, I'd like to quickly recap why it is that the trigonometric functions cosine and sine are equivalent to complex exponential functions. Now, of course, we're talking about complex numbers and we use iota or i to represent the square root of minus one. Euler's equations are given on the top center of your screen where that e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i times the sine of theta and that e to the minus i theta is cosine theta minus i times the sine of theta. We saw in a previous video that one of the general solutions to the time independent Schrodinger equation is given by a linear combination of cosines and sines. And what I'd like to do is show that we can rewrite this general solution in an alternative way using the complex exponential functions. Now, this particular way of writing the Euler equations is quite clunky. So I'm going to use this particular shorthand notation here, C, I and S. So the first thing I'm going to do is add e to the i theta and e to the minus i theta. So we're going to have cosine plus i times sine plus cosine minus i times sine. The i times sine components are going to cancel and we'll be left with twice cosine of theta which of course we can rearrange for cosine theta, which is e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta over two. The next thing we're gonna do is subtract e to the minus i theta from e to the i theta. So that's gonna be cosine plus i times sine theta minus cosine theta plus i times the sine of theta. On this occasion, the cosine components are gonna cancel and we'll be left with twice i times the sine of theta, which of course can be rearranged. And we have that sine of theta is e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta over twice i. I think this is pretty neat. And certainly the first time I saw this, I was really intrigued by it. So let's see if we can rewrite the general solution or one of the general solutions to the time independent Schrodinger equation using these expressions for cosine and sine in terms of complex exponential functions. So on the top left of your screen, we have that particular or that general solution to the time independent Schrodinger equation. But this time, the argument of cosine and sine isn't theta, but rather k sub one x. So we've plugged in basically, or I've plugged in what we showed in um, a moment ago, and we have the expression for cosine and the expression for sine. The next thing I'm going to do is gather like terms. So I'm, gather, I'm going to gather all of the e to the i k sub 1x terms and e to the minus i k sub 1x terms. And what we'll find is we basically have a group of constants before each of the complex exponential functions. And I'm going to call those constants a prime and b prime because they're simply constants. And of course, we can transform or move between a and a prime and b and b prime using the transformations on the bottom center of your screen. And that's it. This means that if you have a linear combination of cosines and sines, a cos k sub one x plus b sine k sub one x, they're equivalent to a linear combination of complex exponential functions, e to the i k sub one x and e to the minus i k sub one x, provided you scale the constants in your linear combination to a prime and b prime where a prime and b prime are given on the bottom center of your screen. And that's that. Thanks for watching. I hope it was useful. Please pass it on to your friends and happy studies.